sound too much, I want to tell you a little bit about this so that you understand what I'm talking about. Down there where my plant that grows out in the woods and the fields, looks something like a turnip. Everybody calls the folks at it. I can figure that's the original too. I can't figure that. Elvis does a cover of it. That's not allowed. The original is allowed. So I, I forget it. I, I don't understand their copyright rules. So we'll give it a we'll give it a whirl. Uh, it is I, Eric Arnold, here on a Saturday, the 13th of June, in the sports barn, working our way through the 30 team MLB preview, of which there will be no pre or no season. So why are we doing it? Well, like I said, I'm this deep into it and I have Asperger's syndrome, so I have to finish it. I have to get a complete set of teams. So we're on team 21 now, the Baltimore Orioles. Um, I saw an article in The Athletic and it was pretty depressing. It was uh, basically, it's describing the letter that went along with the proposal to the players union, this latest proposal by the owners. I don't know how these guys are negotiating. I mean, is this, do they talk to each other on the telephone? That's how I always assumed these negotiations were done in some fashion. I mean, it, it, in my work history, I have negotiated things uh, on behalf of a client. Um, and yeah, it's done over the phone. It's not done in writing. It's not done on paper. Uh, um, the, the heavy lifting of negotiating is done verbally. Uh, so I'm not sure how these guys are doing it. But, you know, the nature of the letter that was sent, yeah, I've, I've seen letters like that. You know, I've had them written to me. I've written a few of them. And it's you know, lawyerese, or, or I'm not a lawyer, so when I write them, I guess it's fake lawyerese uh, for, you know, profanity alert. Go fuck yourself. Uh, you know, that's basically what it says is, uh, dear um, counterparty, um, you are, uh, uh, it won't always use the word bad faith. It'll take like two, three paragraphs to get around to the point that, you're cheating, you're lying, you're not negotiating fairly, you suck, um, go fuck yourself. Uh, that's basically what this latest letter from the owners is, is that, you know, you're not, uh, and I get their point. In other words, they thought that they were on the same page with the players in March, in that, okay, look, we can't, play a full season because of this emergency. Uh, let's, you know, you will agree that you're not going to get paid for games that aren't played, right? Okay, good. That seemed obvious. Um, but uh, then once we go ahead and play, you know, we'll pay you for those games you do play. Uh, but we want to talk about it again, though, if we got to play these in front of empty stadiums. Which, of course, now is what's happened. Uh, it seems like the majority of the season is going to be played in front of empty stadiums, if there is a season. So the owners want to talk again. 
And the players are like, well, wait a minute now. No, no, no. You know, we're, we're not giving you a dime. And the owners are kind of like, well, I thought we were going to talk at least. And the players are like, talking's over. That was over in March. Sorry, you missed the bus. So the owners are, you know, that's what we would call bad faith. I would call that the players are bargaining in bad faith. Now, if the owners released uh, this letter to the media, which they probably did, you know, somebody released it to the athletic. They, they, they didn't break into somebody's office and steal it. Somebody gave it to them. And it was probably the owners. You know, that's bargaining in bad faith. You know, you're, you're negotiating through the media. You're trying to, do you want to deal or do you want to make the other side look bad? So, you know, and the owners, I think, are now responding in kind, going, you know what, we're really at a point of fuck these guys. And the owner, uh, players apparently have, uh, you know, crossed the Rubicon some time ago and said, we don't care if we play a season or not. So I think I've been just exercising my gums here for the last two months, telling you about teams that aren't going to play, or if they do play, it's going to be a wholly illegitimate season, um, of which you might as well just go day trade. Apparently that's what a lot of sports bettors are not doing, is day trading. Um... I hesitate to get involved in that. I don't know enough about it. I'm, I might just, I want to win. I don't want to gamble. That's the difference between a lot of betters. Is some people just need the action. I'm past the action stage. I don't know if I was ever in the action stage. I always want to win. I always want to win. And if I don't think I have an edge, I'm not going to play. So I don't have an edge in day trading. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm not going to play. Um... I don't know if you'll be able to discern an edge in a 50-game MLB season or not. So, but it certainly looks like that's where we're headed. It looks like, you know, the relationship between the players and owners is pretty well broken. Um, I didn't realize these sides hate each other this much. I, honestly, I'm not sure exactly um, what cross the current players association is a... a being, has been uh, tasked with carrying. I really don't. Uh, you're the only major sport without a salary cap. You guys should be thankful for that. And, you know, they just go on like, uh, you know, it's uh, 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 that's their right. Uh, you know, I, I kind of almost am at the position where if and when there's a next strike, I hope the owners just break the union. Just snap them in half. And start over with new players, and there'll be a cap. I think the other leagues with a cap run just fine. The NBA, the NFL, NHL, I think they run just fine. So I don't know what it's going to be financial Armageddon if MLB is forced into uh, some kind of a salary cap. Anyway, the Orioles, uh, we, you know, terrible team, 100 lost team. Each of the last two years. Um, horrible bet. I almost think that if you can identify an awful team, that there's value there. Maybe more so than a, a identifying a great team. Uh, in other words, I think the market corrects more quickly to the Astros, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, the Yankees when they start just winning every game rather than the Orioles. The Reds, yeah, and I said the Red subscriber X or the Tigers. Those are the three teams that have been the worst record in the last three years. The Reds, Tigers, and Orioles. In this order, Tigers, Reds, Orioles. Uh, so it, it, the market, I don't think, corrects as quickly when you have a terrible team. Um, at any rate... The number is 56.5, so Vegas really expects this team to be bad. This bit worse than the Tigers, uh, which I found strange. I don't think the Orioles are going to be that bad. Uh, uh, we're pushing. We're, you know, I'm not going to be excited to bet on these guys, but I may not necessarily seek out spots to bet against them. I just think that they've got... Some young players that could improve. Uh, their pitching could improve a little bit. That's their main Achilles heel. They have no 
of pitching. Um, it, it, there's not a lot of, uh, uh, to say a positive about this team, um, but we're going to say they're going to be better than what Vegas may think. So I wouldn't necessarily look these guys up to bet against them. Um, so there you have that. All right, that's all we got for you. So uh, I think I'm going to upload this. See if Hope Salad, that's the name of the song, Hope Salad Annie sneaks its way past the censors uh, by Tony Joe White, I believe. That's what my understanding is, that he's the original artist. He was the one doing it. According to YouTube, it's okay to use it. We'll find out. All right, thanks for being here. What's next? We don't know. I think the Red Sox. We almost might as well just start morphing into the NBA. You know, that's probably going to be the league that starts playing first. July 30th, right? Okay. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you again.